Hello, in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about the bass shell, what shells are, and show you three tricks that will make working with the bass shell easier. First, a shell is a program that manages a command line interface for the operating system. Here, when we're working at the command line, the shell is a, a program that gets our commands, uh, interprets them, makes sure they're executed, and shows us the results here. So when we do commands such as clear to clear the screen or PWD to have the computer tell us which directory is the current working directory or default directory, uh, PWD stands for print working directory, or commands like ls to list the files in the current working directory, it's the shell that's examining those commands and uh, delivering the results to us. The most popular shell is the bash shell, which stands for born again shell. It's a free version of a previous shell known as the born shell. And the uh, bash shell is part of the GNU project. And it's the default shell on Linux OS X. And it's also the default shell that's selected for you if you are using the Sigwin Unix emulator on Windows. I'd like to show you three shortcuts that will make working at the command line easier. And the first is name completion. When you hit the tab key, the bash shell will look at characters you've typed and see if it can figure out what characters you would type next and type them for you. For example, let's issue a command to compile one of these files here. G++ minus wall minus pedantic and I'll type the letter G. Now at this point I'll pause and if we look at the files that we've seen previously we'll notice that there's one file that starts with the letter G. I'll hit tab and the bash shell sees that there's only one file that starts with the letter G. I've hit G and tab, knows that must be the one I want and types the rest of it for me. And now I can hit enter the next shortcut that I want to show you is using the arrow keys, the up arrow and down arrow, to scroll through a history of previous commands. So I'll hit the up arrow, and that shows me the command that I've typed previously. Now I can hit enter, and it will do that command again. When you bring up a previous command with the arrow keys, you can also edit that line before you hit enter. So. Let me hit backspace here a few times, and let's type the letter V, and I'll hit tab. Now, notice here I've got more than one file that starts with the letter V, V average and visionaire, .cpp. And when I type the letter V and hit tab, the computer doesn't know which one of those two I want, and it won't guess. So if I give it a little bit more information, I'll add the letter I, and hit tab. Now it's able to do that command for me. We hit up arrow and I'll hit up arrow again and I'm back to compiling the GCD program. I'll go ahead and hit enter. The third and last shortcut that I want to show you right now is using the exclamation point, sometimes known as the bang character in Unix. And when you use that, that will repeat the last command that you typed that starts with the letters that you put after the exclamation point. So let me show you an example. I'll type bang g and enter. And so that will repeat the last command that I typed that started with the letter g, which was g++ minus wall minus pedantic gcd.cpp. So for only three keystrokes, bang g, enter, I was able to compile the program. Here I'll do bang c. The last command that you saw me type a couple minutes ago was clear or bang l. And there it does the ls. The more time you spend at the command line, the more important it is to know and use those shortcuts. And just like everything, it gets easier and better with practice. Thank you.